Great communicators are rare, but when they appear, they can change the world with the power of their words. I'm referring to people like Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream. Barack Obama, if you like your current insurance, you keep that insurance, period. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we have horrible communicators, people who can't get a point across no matter how hard they try, people who are constantly misunderstood because their message is so incredibly unclear and incoherent. If they somehow manage to inspire others to take action, it's very often the wrong action because no one understands what they've been called to do. According to my Muslim friends, the worst communicator in all of history is Allah, which is odd because throughout the Quran, Allah brags about how clear his commands are. Of course, my Muslim friends don't come right out and say Allah is the worst communicator ever, but they show they believe this by relentlessly insisting that Allah rarely means what he says and that he frequently means the exact opposite of what he says. For instance, in Surah 4 verse 34 of the Quran, Allah tells Muslim men, if you fear disobedience or rebellion from your wives, warn them, banish them to separate beds, and beat them until they obey you. What does Allah mean by beat them? Well, my Muslim friends assure me that when Allah says, beat them, he only means tap them lightly on the shoulder with a toothbrush as a symbol of your displeasure. Unfortunately, when Allah tried to say, tap them lightly with a toothbrush, all that came out was beat them, a minor verbal blunder that led to endless misery for millions of women. In Surah 5 verse 51, Allah commands Muslims, do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends, they are friends of each other. But when he says, don't take them for friends, he actually means make as many Jewish and Christian friends as possible because Islam is a religion of interfaith harmony. In Surah 98 verse 6, Allah calls Christians and Jews the worst of creatures. But when he calls us the worst of creatures, it's really a term of endearment. Like when you're watching a football game with your best buddy and you say, yo, you're the worst of creatures. Now pass me the nachos, you scum. Surah 9 verse 5, Allah declares, when the sacred months have passed, slay the idolaters wherever you find them. But slay, in Allah's bizarre terminology, means hug. Surah 9 verse 29, Allah orders his followers to fight those who do not believe in Allah. But even though he specifically orders Muslims to fight people based on their beliefs, he really wants them to read between the lines where the invisibly small print shows that he's only referring to self-defense. Surah 9 verse 73, Allah commands Muhammad to wage jihad against unbelievers and hypocrites when he obviously means, listen folks, the gap between my brain and my mouth is infinite. And since it's impossible to traverse an actual infinite, don't ever listen to anything I say. Oddly enough, Allah's ability to speak clearly is inversely proportional to the number of jihadists who are ready to kill for Muhammad. When Muhammad's outnumbered and can't hope to subjugate the unbelievers, Allah remembers to take his lucidity meds so he can say all the peaceful things he really wants to say, like, there is no compulsion in religion. But as soon as Muhammad wins the hearts of a few thousand bloodthirsty, sex-crazed jihadists shrieking Allahu Akbar, Allah gets so excited that he forgets to renew his prescription, resulting in some of history's most epic rants about slaughtering infidels and raping their wives and daughters. I confess, Muslims are making me feel sorry for poor, poor Allah. Here he is bragging about how clear his book is when, according to his followers, it's not clear at all. It's like someone bragging about what a great singer he is. Then he goes on American Idol and the judges tell him that he sounds like a cat trying to climb out of a pool by clawing its way up a chalkboard. So here's westernized Islamic theology in a nutshell. Allah is basically a good guy. He means well, he tries, but he has a little problem. No matter how hard he practices his vocabulary and syntax and grammar, he just can't manage to say what he means. He wants to say nice things, but he gets all tongue-tied and the words won't come out right. Allah has a speech impediment, perhaps dysphagia or some sort of cosmic Tourette syndrome. So when he wants to say, be kind to everyone, he, he fumbles over his words and blurts out, only be merciful towards fellow Muslims. He tries desperately to say, live in peace whenever possible, but his vocal cords malfunction and all that comes out is, be not weary and faint-hearted, crying for peace when you should be uppermost. He spends all eternity trying to put together the simple sentence, I love everyone. But when it's time to put his mouth where his heart is, his disability kicks in, neurons misfire, and the bridge between mouth and heart collapses, leaving us with, Allah does not love the unbelievers. This Walt Disney version of Islam, so familiar to us in the West, is a tragic tale of a stuttering, stammering, feeble deity who's lost control of his faculties and is forced by his own incompetence to sit back and watch helplessly as 270 million people die in his name. Until, after nearly 14 centuries of endless bloodshed, he's finally rescued by his American followers, who rarely have a clue what he's commanded, and even when they do, know not to take what he says too seriously. Now, for all you westernized Muslims who think I'm making fun of your God, I'm not. 
You are. When you tell me to believe in a God who claims to be perfectly clear in his commands, and then you spend the rest of your conversation telling me what he really means but can't manage to say, it's like you're telling me that Allah has some serious mental health issues. And weird questions start popping into my head like, where did Allah get these mental health issues? Are they genetic? Were his, were his parents first cousins who also couldn't say what they meant but constantly bragged about being perfectly clear? For the record, I think that Allah's commands are clear, and I don't even believe in your God. I'm convinced that the God of the Quran is a figment of Muhammad's depraved imagination. And this is what should keep you up at night, my Muslim friends. I have more respect for the communication ability of a homicidal figment of Muhammad's imagination than you have for the God you worship. I take Allah's commands seriously enough not to reinterpret them whenever I feel like it. But if you, the people we're told daily, are the true Muslims, don't have even this basic level of respect for Allah? Why should the rest of us care what he says?